we see the importance of this flotilla setting sail to go from one country to another country because that is the only way that this blockade, that this siege can be broken. The only way that you can understand the aftermath of October 7th is to be able to understand what was happening in the 30 years that preceded October the 7th. It's a myth that the siege began in 2006, 2007 with the general election that happened. Why? Because since the 1990s, Israel has had some form of closure or blockade on the Gaza Strip. You could see that from the 1990s, even up until 2006, that there wasn't free access or free flow of people or of goods into the Gaza Strip. To the contrary, Israel was controlling all aspects of that. The siege was then solidified and then, of course, intensified in the years 2006, 2007. This is important because in order to understand the legality, you need to understand that history. So let's go on to the legality. Is the siege legal? And the answer is obviously no. Israel as an occupier is under an obligation to protect and to ensure that Palestinians have what's necessary not to impose a blockade on them. And instead what Israel has done is created a system of blockade and closure in order to punish Palestinians. Remember, Palestinians are stateless in the Gaza Strip 80% of them are refugees. We're talking about a child population where more than 50% are under the age of 18. All of this, of course, has been compounded by Israel's genocide now in the Gaza Strip. And what Israel has now done is it's combined the blockade with measures of starvation, with the deliberate targeting of aid workers, with the deliberate targeting of UN workers in order to create the conditions where there is genocide. And that's why we are seeing death by starvation. And we've seen that this isn't just actions, but deliberate intent backing those actions. And the reason that they could turn off the tap, so to speak, was because of the fact that they had been maintaining such a brutal siege and blockade on the Gaza Strip. Add that together, and you can see that the impact and the intent is genocide. But there is a history of it, and the history of it is that Israel has made deliberate attempts to try to starve off the Gaza Strip in the hopes that somehow they can exert more control. Look, the, the Israeli logic when it comes to Palestinians is that what won't be learned with force will only be learned with more force. One of the most important things right now is to break that siege and break that blockade. And I want to paint the picture for what it's like here in Palestine and what it is that we're seeing from this end. This isn't just a blockade and siege that's being imposed by the Israeli government. It's a blockade and siege that's being imposed by the Israeli government that Israeli citizens are cheering on. In fact, we've seen that Israelis have been attacking aid trucks. We've seen that Israelis have put up uh, blockades so that trucks can't move forward. We've actually even seen them put up bouncy castles. You know, those castles that you use for your kids for their birthday parties, we've seen that they put them up in the middle of the street in order to block trucks from going in. While they've put up these bouncy castles, they're distributing popcorn, giving out cotton candy, blasting songs, and dancing. And so our genocide is literally their entertainment. And that's why it's so important for people to come together to actually work to break that blockade. Is it legal? Yes, it's legal to break the blockade because the blockade by its nature is illegal. And this is why it's so imperative upon countries and upon individuals to do what's necessary in order to break that siege. We see the, the importance of this flotilla setting sail to go from one country to another country because that is the only way that this blockade, that this siege can be broken. We've seen that Israel has ignored diplomatic efforts to break the blockade. We've even seen that Israel has ignored any attempts or any calls by the international community to allow aid in. And so this is where it becomes imperative upon individuals to act. We're up against a lot. Gaza is not easily accessible. And so when we think of the global ways to deal with the siege, it's impossible 
to effectively do it by air. By land, we have the combination of Israeli settlers and soldiers and the Egyptians who are trying to block access, particularly given Israel's takeover of the Rafah border crossing. And all that's left is by sea. I don't underestimate the difficulty of this flotilla coming in, but the message that it sends to the world, and especially to Palestinians, is that the world is not leaving Gaza alone. The world is not turning a blind eye to this siege, to this blockade. The world actually believes that Palestinians have a right to exist. They have a right to be alive and they have a right to thrive. And that is the most powerful message that can be sent to Palestinians at this time.